Hi. In the past couple lectures, we looked at first our steady state sinusoidal voltage and current signals. We talked about how to characterize them. And then we talked about how to convert that steady state sinusoidal mathematical expression into a phaser, um, which is designed to make it much easier to work with and manipulate. In this lecture, we're going to take those sort of abstract concepts and we're going to apply them to our actual circuit elements, resistors, capacitors, and inductors. So in this lesson, we're going to derive our voltage current, our VI relationships for each of these three passive components. And originally, I had thought to do this as a separate lecture and then a discussion of Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws in sinusoids as a separate lecture. But it turns out, as I was preparing this lecture, that phasers make Kirchhoff's laws so simple that we actually don't even really need to discuss them. It's exactly the same as you dealt with in your DC signals, you know, voltages around a loop sum to zero and currents going into a node sum to zero. So in this one, in this lecture, we'll derive the VI relationships for voltage, or yeah, the VI, excuse me, the VI relationships for resistors, capacitors, and inductors. And then we'll work a couple of examples where we'll see not only how that applies to calculating voltages given some values, um, but also how to use Kirchhoff's voltage and current laws to sum everything up. So there we go, let's just get right into it. Let's start things off by deriving the VI relationship. VI relationship for a resistor. Resistor. Now we remember that from our previous circuits class that this is just Ohm's law, right? V equals R times i. So now what we want to do is just sort of convert it into our steady state sinusoidal expression. We'll say that Rv, which is now a function of time, is equal to R, resistance never changes, times R i sub m times the cosine of omega t plus phi degrees, just like that. And then of course voltage is given in volts. So we just need to take this and convert it to a phaser. So we'll say that, actually there's really nothing to do here except say that our phaser V is now equal to R times IM at the angle of phi degrees. And there we go. That's given in volts and that's all there is to it. The resistor is really, really simple. Um, you might sometimes see a shorthand where it just says V is equal to R times the sort of phasor I in volts, which is basically just a restating of uh, Ohm's law in phasor form. I, when I'm working with the, the circuit elements, like to use this form, and it doesn't really matter so much in resistors, but as we see in inductors and capacitors, um, this can be sort of mathematically a little bit easier to work with when we start dealing with the phase shifts. But here we go. For resistors, it's pretty easy. Ohm's law is the same um, for DC circuits as they are for AC circuits. So let's move on and do the inductor. As we'll see, this will be a little bit more interesting. So we'll say the VI relationship for an inductor. Now we remember from our previous circuits class that voltage in an inductor is equal to the inductance times the derivative of current with respect to time. So this is what we'll have to work with here. So let's see, V is now a function of T and is equal to L times the derivative with respect to time of our current I sub M cosine of omega T minus phi degrees. So we'll have to solve this derivative. The I M, M comes out, so we'll just have V T is equal to L times I M. Now the derivative of cosine of omega T minus phi is going to be a little bit of chain rule. It's going to have a omega coming to the outside, so it's going to be omega times negative sine of omega t plus plus phi degrees. 
Let's go ahead and clean this up just a little bit to make it easier to read. Um, yeah. So we've got what? L. Now let's do this. Let's do omega L. I am actually negative omega L. I am times the sine of omega T plus five degrees. Now we want to convert this into a phasor, so we'll need to convert this back to cosine, and this is where the fun bit kinks in. We'll say that's VT is equal to minus omega L I M times cosine of omega T plus five degrees plus, no, excuse me, not plus, minus 90 degrees. So now when we're ready to go ahead and plug this in, or now let's convert it to a phaser, we'll get a thing that kind of looks like this. We'll say V, our phaser V is equal to minus omega L, I M E to the J omega T, E to the J five degrees, and E to the minus J 90 degrees. Now it turns out that E to the minus J 90 degrees is actually just equal to minus J. So we'll lose the negative sign but add a, a J there. So we'll have J omega L I M E J omega T E, J, phi degrees. And now we've got our phaser there. Oops, I forgot the equal sign. So now we're ready to write our final solution here. V is equal to J omega L I sub M at an angle of phi degrees. Now, if we want to, we can actually sort of do this in reverse. So this will be the final answer right here. This is the textbook solution for that, right? Because that's V is equal to J omega L times our phaser for current. But if we want to lose this J here, we can actually write it in an alternate form that, again, I like a lot because it makes the arithmetic easier when we actually go to solve it. And what we'll do is we'll write it like this. We'll say that it's omega L I M at an angle of phi degrees plus 90 degrees. So we see that the inductor produces a phase shift. We'll say a 90 degree phase shift in the voltage. Just like that. So there we go. That is our alternate form. Like I said, I like the textbook leans pretty heavily on these two. I really like that one just because I think it's a little bit easier to work with. You'll get solutions that match up a little bit better if you use that technique. So next up, finally, we'll do the VI relationship in a capacitor. So VI relationship. in a capacitor. So remember from our previous circuits class that the current in a capacitor is equal to C dV dt. It's flipped over, right? So we'll actually start on the current side, although we still want to get it as an expression, um, V is equal to some um, impedance times the current. <laughs> but let's go ahead and start here. We'll say we've got I as a function of T is equal to C times the derivative with respect to t of v sub m times the cosine of omega t plus phi degrees. So we need to take that derivative. Vm comes out. We'll get i t is equal to negative, just like before, negative omega c vm 
times the sine of omega t plus phi degrees. We'll do the same thing. We'll phase shift it 90 degrees to get our cosine there. I t is equal to minus omega c vm times the cosine of omega t plus phi degrees. Oh, excuse me, plus five degrees minus 90. Forgot about the most important part there, minus 90 degrees. And now we're ready to convert everything back to a phaser. And we'll actually get basically the exact same result we had before. We'll get that I, our phaser I now is equal to J omega C times our voltage. And since we want it in a sort of V is equal to something times I form, we'll say that V V is equal to 1 over J omega C times I. Another way to write that is kind of like before, we can say that V, I don't know why I make my V so weird, V is equal to um, I sub M over omega C at an angle of phi degrees minus 90 degrees. So again, I kind of like this. It's gonna make the math easier when you work stuff out. But there you go. There is our VI relationship for our capacitor. So let's go ahead and kind of recap everything. And down here, let's do this. Let's say the resistor inductor, capacitor, and up on top, I want to say, let's have the VI relationship, then the impedance, which is our Z, and then our, what we're gonna call reactance. We'll talk about what reactance is later on. But just know that it is the imaginary component of impedance. So VI, impedance, reactance. So for the resistor, it's super easy. V is equal to R I. Its impedance is just R, and it has no imaginary component of impedance. It has no reactance. For an inductor, V is equal to J omega L times R, which means that its impedance is J omega L, which means its reactance, it only has an imaginary component, so its reactance is omega L. Now for capacitors, V, we just did it, V is equal to one over J omega C times I. The impedance here is a little bit differently. We have to multiply by J over J to bring the, the J up to the top. So what happens here is we get J times negative one over omega C, which means its reactance is negative one over omega C. So there we go. If you weren't paying attention to anything else, Here's the take-home stuff, the good part to remember. What the VI relationships are, what the impedance is, what is the reactance. Now, a final note um, about Kirchhoff's laws. Perhaps 2H, Kirchhoff's laws. For voltage, remember, around a closed loop. Say that's V1, V2, V3, and V4. We're just going to have that even the so it's phasers, phaser V1 plus phaser V2 plus phaser V3 plus phaser V4. All the voltages around a closed loop equals zero, just like before. 
And for current, if we have a node with currents coming in, and we say that's what I1, I2, I3, and I4, we'll still get that phaser I1. plus phaser I2 plus phaser I3 plus phaser I4 equals zero. So exactly the same as it was before. Remember that our phasers in polar form, we can't add them up directly. We have to convert them to rectangular form. But beyond that, everything is super easy. So there we go. That is how we apply phasers to our passive circuit elements. And like I said, the important thing Remember the stuff just right here in this table. What are those VI relationships and what are the impedances and reactances for resistors, inductors, and capacitors? So that's all there is to it. We looked at how we apply phasers to our passive circuit elements. In the next couple of videos, we'll work some practical examples where we actually put some values on top of our circuit elements and see how we can calculate these impedances and calculate these um, voltage and current relationships. And in the upcoming videos, we'll take a look at how to do our sort of transformations like series impedances, parallel impedances, um, source transformations, delta Y simplification, stuff like that. So we'll actually kind of start to build a little bit and take all of those same circuit analysis tools that you knew from circuits one and just kind of keep applying this sort of phaser concept on top of them. So thank you so much. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you.